I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Nicholas Fett, the CEO of Daxia. Nicholas, it's great to have you on the show and uh, it's great to speak to you again. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Yeah, no problem. It's uh, great speaking with you too, Ashton. So I'm really excited to talk about Daxia today and uh, there's so much to know and you know this really is the future of finance. So if you would give us an overview of your guys' project and how you guys are redesigning financial derivatives, uh, I'd appreciate that intro. Uh, sure, so um, I actually, to just kind of talk quick about how I got into it, I was actually working at the CFTC, so it was a federal regulator for uh, derivatives and you sort of saw a lot of people trying to put derivatives, so basically financial contracts on the blockchain. Um, you know, whether it's Goldman talking about doing it or some other companies, but it was all just, you know, reinventing this, the same middleman model. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I thought, you know, there's definitely a better way to do that. So why don't I just start doing it myself? But the basic product that we create are long and short tokens. So instead of the traditional derivatives contract where you have, you know, Ashton agrees to pay Nick if the price goes up and I agree to pay you if the price goes down, what we do is you lock money into a smart contract on top of Ethereum, and that smart contract agrees to pay the holder of a token based upon the change in a reference price. So now what this actually enables is, you know, now you can have long Bitcoin tokens or short Bitcoin tokens on top of Ethereum. You can have a, a long S&P 500 token, you can have a short S&P 500 token, or you can have a, you know, leveraged Bitcoin token, so like a 5x the price of Bitcoin token. Uh, all of these can now be put on top of Ethereum and can be traded around completely trustlessly so you don't have any of those middleman problems uh, you know, that lead to all of those problems that derivatives seem to cause. That's awesome, Nick. Yeah, and you know, this really does sound like we're opening up a whole new door here to you know, decentralized smart contract based derivatives uh, where we can have a trustless system. You know, how, how far can we go with tokenizing assets on Ethereum. And with, with Daxia, are you guys able to essentially tokenize you know, the entire stock market? Yeah, so you just basically need a reference oracle and then you can uh, you know, have long and short tokens on, on any different asset. And that's really, you know, if you think about how the traditional financial system works. So you, know, you have ETF products, but ETFs for, in most cases, they're backed just by derivatives. So, you know, they, you have options contracts or futures contracts that are backing all of these products. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see happening on top of Ethereum. So you're going to see these decentralized funds and they're not going to be backed with the actual tokens or, you know, you obviously can't put Apple stock onto Ethereum, mm -hmm. but you can put the price of Apple stock onto Ethereum and then you can tokenize it and trade it around. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, very interesting. And, you know, with, with oracles and, you know, tokenizing these, centralized stocks it really isn't like a fully decentralized asset so to say because you know oracles have to rely on centralized price feeds and and the stocks are still on the stock market technically um, but i guess it's just the way that you're trading them is more decentralized is that right yeah so that's with most derivatives contracts on ethereum you sort of rely on the centralized oracle so you know you would say like okay what's the price of bitcoin and then how do you get it onto ethereum that's usually has to be a centralized manner mm -hmm. but we actually just released uh our white paper on teller which is our oracle solution and we actually have we use miners to securely place uh, oracle data into our contracts so we have a system of miners on top of ethereum and they all compete to enter in the price of Bitcoin or okay. Apple or the S&P 500 hmm. into our smart contracts. So there are actually ways that are currently being developed so that way you can completely decentralize these contracts. Wow, that's very interesting actually. I've, I've never heard that before. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Now, is the product, is the main you know, Daxia product are already released and in the market or you know, what's the timeline like and when did you guys start the development of that? Uh, so we started the development of this um, probably in mid-2017. Uh, we released our first beta uh, last February, and then we released our mainnet version uh, in last August, and then we're releasing a new version next quarter with the new and upgraded Oracle. So you know, we're continuing to develop it and uh, just create different pieces for people to trade around as well as different products. You know, Right now, we actually just have the... Uh, short and long Ethereum tokens on a leveraged basis. So you can go a 5x Ethereum token 
or you can go short on a 5x basis either. Um, you know, and, and that's really, I, I'd say like short and long Ethereum tokens are short, sort of what you've seen really over the past six months. So if you think about what a stable coin is, a stable coin is actually just a short ETH US dollar derivative. So you're shorting the ETH US dollar price and then you actually have somebody yeah. on the other side of that. Um, so that's, you know, now that people have sort of realized the value of, okay, well now you can tokenize the short of something. Let's move beyond just a stable coin. Let's move into other assets, and that's what we're doing. Yeah, very interesting. And you know, do you see stable coins still, you know, being? It's a lot of people have talked about that as one of the top trends of 2019. I haven't seen too many updates regarding stable coins, but you know, do you see those still having a, a stable position in the economy on top of all of these derivative contracts that you guys are bringing in, or do you think that will sort of transition into what you guys are doing? So I, I think you can definitely see them having a role. Um, so there's really just two flavors of stable coins in the market. You know, you have the algorithmic stable coins, whether it be like a make or die. Um, and, and that's really just sort of a, a derivatives contract. Or you have the collateralized ones, which are, you know, with the USDC or any of these tether, for instance, where you actually have or supposedly have the dollar backing them up. Um, you know, they're, they're really two different flavors. And, and right now you're starting to see some of those transfer into other assets. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you've seen WBTC is mm -hmm. coming onto Ethereum, so people are, you know, locking Bitcoin in and then issuing tokens. So it's a very centralized thing, but I think you're going to start seeing the next trend is going to be with, you know, the algorithmic Bitcoin tokens on top. And that'll probably be, you know, the future because as we all know, you know, there's, there's not really a whole lot of points of putting these centralized tokens on top of Ethereum. It, it makes much more sense whenever you can do them in an actual trustless manner and you have these bearer assets that you can trade around. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. So, you know, this sounds revolutionary and I'm glad that you guys are doing it, but it makes sense that, you know, that maybe there's other people doing this as well. You know, do you guys have competition that are working towards, you guys working towards the same goal or are you guys really doing something unique? And, you know, what makes you guys unique doing this? Um, so I'd say there's a few other companies that are trying to do different pieces, you know, so it, the biggest differentiator between us and sort of any of the other derivatives platforms is you all, re you really just have to look at what the Oracle mechanism is, because mm -hmm. that's really the, the core piece. You know, we, we've developed our own, um, other people. So for instance, uh, DYDX is one of the more well-funded derivatives projects in the space, uh, by Coinbase, they use an auction mechanism, so they can only use, uh, ERC 20 tokens. Um, and then they lock them up and auction them off as their Oracle. Uh, Veil um, is another super cool project. I, I actually love all of the projects. So, you know, I, I'm, I hope they all succeed because they're all, you know, kind of working to get customers just like we are. Uh, Veil, they they call, they use uh, Augur prediction markets as their Oracle. So, um, you know, you can have those, those different pieces uh, and also create derivative structures off of prediction markets. And that's what they're doing. But, you know, there's, it's, it's so early in the market. We're all just trying to, you know, tell the world that this is actually a thing together. Yeah, totally. And I love your mentality behind that. Really, it's, you know, at this stage, we're so early that and if you're comparing even the whole market capitalization of cryptocurrencies to the stock market, we're, you know, just a little drop of sand here. So working together, obviously, is going to bring this forward faster rather than trying to compete with each other um, because you really are trying to do, you know, bring this industry to grow. So I like that you guys are doing that. So do you guys, are, are you guys looking for any, you know, outside investors or outside help workers to get involved with Daxia? Um, you know, what kind of partnerships or interest are you guys looking to, to uh, reach out to you? Yeah, so we're definitely um, we're starting to raise money here. Uh, we were Ethereum Foundation grantees last year, so we were funded by the Ethereum Foundation. Uh, we did a lot of research on on side chains and uh, helping to build out our product. And now that that grant period is over, we're uh, moving into where we'll be looking for outside capital to kind of help propel this forward through, you know, I guess the next retail boom. Awesome! Congratulations on that Ethereum Foundation grant. That's sounds yeah. amazing and obviously justifies what you guys are doing right now so uh, i'm excited to see you know more of those new types of derivatives come into fruition as the platform grows now you know as 
a, like a sustainable business, do you guys have a business model built into this where there's either some sort of transaction fees or revenue model for Daxia? So right now it, we do not, um, at least we, you know, we, the way that we envision sort of monetizing in the future is more of the custom contracts for uh, various exchanges and, and other people who want to utilize the products. Mm -hmm. So whenever you look at, you know, whenever you, you can say, they, oh, we want to create a long Bitcoin token. Oh, we can create that for your exchange and give you long Bitcoin tokens. The way that we sort of envision it playing out is you'll have, you know, some, some exchanges that list, you know, just long Bitcoin tokens. Other ones may be more risky and they'll want to do the long Bitcoin tokens on a 100x multiplier, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, or, you know, the, the one day contract, eight hour contracts or, or the quarterly contracts. And, and we can really just do that as a service to help create them. In addition, our Oracle solution also has a mineable token on Ethereum that's associated with it. Uh, so we do have that, that aspect of it because we get a dev share from the token mining. That's great. Awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And that sounds great for exchanges to be able to provide those custom solutions for them. So that sounds like a great model. So I'm excited to see, uh, you know, your guys' Oracle come to fruition and that, that mining aspect built into it and that competitive nature sounds like you know, revolutionary. So, you know, what, what's the specific timeline on the release of that? Um, is that something that's coming out in the next couple months here? And, you know, what, what other big things beyond that Oracle you know, are we going to see for a major release to the public? Uh, so the Oracle is right now undergoing an audit. So uh, we don't uh, assume that there's going to be any issues with the audit there. Uh, but that should be over within a month and a half. And then after that, we'll be pushing it out. Um, the other big releases are, you know, we're, we're looking to um, have rebalancing tokens. So we've partnered with Set Protocol in the space. So what they do are sort of these decentralized ETF baskets. But what we've figured out how to do with them is you can actually have these rolling derivatives contracts that you can build. So if you have, say, a one week long contract, you can have a set basket that you'll put put the derivative in for one week and it'll automatically roll over to the next week for you. So then you can have more of the consistent exposure, which is actually how, you know, the traditional financial sector works. So if you want to have a consistent short, you know, with a futures product, you would just roll over every month rather than. You know, like like Maker, for instance, they just over collateralize. Uh, this, this will actually reduce the amount of collateralization you need for a lot of these stable coins or other uh, tokens. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you know, as you guys release these products, uh, of course, usually you know challenges and barriers come up. Do you are you guys foreseeing you know predominantly legislative barriers or technology barriers? You know, what are the hurdles that you guys need to overcome in the next year or two to really grow this to a mainstream thing? Uh, you know, the, the crypto winter is obviously a, a giant obstacle as far as, you know, you want to make sure that you have the right sentiment in, in people's mind for adopting these new decentralized financial products and be willing to try them. Uh, just because, you know, like you and I obviously see that they work, but we need to sort of convince other people that they work. Uh, so some of the other things, obviously, you know, legislative, if, if they slap down and say that, you know, all crypto needs to be KYC, AMLed or something like that, it could, it might hinder the decentralized finance space a little bit. Uh, but, you know, the, the biggest pieces are just sort of building it and uh, creating a market for it. That's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, those new products released and I'm super excited about it. So let's hope that uh, our viewers see the same in that. And uh, if people are looking to find more out about Daxia, what's the best way for them to get involved or reach out into the community? Yeah, you can just uh, go to our website, www.daxia.us, and Ooh. you'll find everything you need to know there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick. I appreciate the time today. And it uh, sounds like you guys have a great project. And I'd love to follow up in the coming months, you know, after the Oracle is released, and uh, we'll see how the growth of Daxia uh, is going. So I appreciate you taking the time today. Awesome. Thanks, Ashton.